Hello everyone, welcome to Big Picture Monday. This is Callie Black here with all the context you need to totally rock this week's Come Follow Me readings. This week we are studying two of the books of the Minor Prophets, Haggai and Zechariah. And this is our second to last week in the Old Testament. Crazy, crazy. I can't believe we're almost done here. Um, but thank you for sticking with me and thank you for being here for those who have been here all year long watching all of these Old Testament videos. I hope that these have helped you feel confident in understanding what is going on. Um, and thank you for all the fun feedback. Of course, these will be continuing next year for New Testament. Don't worry about that. I'm not going anywhere. Um, but let's talk about Haggai and Zechariah because they were both prophets at a time that we haven't talked about for a very long time. And by a long time, I mean a few months. In Come Follow Me World, that seems like a long time. So just a quick little recap here. We have Jerusalem. We have prophets prophesying that Jeru Jerusalem's going to be destroyed by Babylon, right? And it finally happens. In fact, Babylon attacks and conquers them a few different times, but we finally have like the big ultimate destruction. The temple is destroyed. The walls of the city are destroyed. Huge destruction. Most of them are carried away into captivity in Babylon. We call it captivity. We call it exile as well. So that's where they've been. Now, in the meantime, Babylon then gets conquered by the Persians. So now the Jews, we now start referring to them as Jews. That happens during the exile. The Jews are now under control of the Persians. And the Persian kings, Persian king Cyrus was the first to do it, but Persian king Darius later on did the same thing. They started giving some of the Jews permission to return back to Jerusalem to rebuild their city, to rebuild the temple, to rebuild the walls. Is this sounding familiar? <laughs> um, we read about it in the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. It was at the very end of the historical section of the Old Testament. So it's like the end of the story part of the Old Testament. Then we went back to poetry um, for a while. So we learned about these groups. There were multiple different groups who were able to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple, to start rebuilding Jerusalem. Well, both Haggai and Zechariah were prophets during this time. We call it post-exile Jerusalem. Post-exile Jerusalem. So it's when groups of Jews were allowed to return back to Jerusalem and they're starting to rebuild the temple. They're rebuilding everything that was destroyed. And that's where these two individuals come into play. Haggai and Zechariah were both prophets during this time, delivering messages to the Jews who were living in post-exile Jerusalem. Now, the interesting part is, is that many of these Jews coming back, it had been a few decades since the original destruction. And so that meant decades, a few of them actually had lived in Jerusalem beforehand. A few of them had worshipped at the temple when it was in its original form. And so returning back and seeing everything absolutely destroyed was very emotional. And we talked about this back when we were in Ezra and Nehemiah and studying those books. Um, but a lot of them also had never been to Jerusalem. So even though we, we say returning back to Jerusalem, many of them had been born in exile. They had been born in captivity and now they were coming back to Jerusalem. And even as the decades go on, the next generation kind of took over as well. Um, there are two more names that you need to know that we did talk about back when we were in Ezra and Nehemiah talking about the original context. And that is Zerubbabel and Joshua, who also goes by Jeshua. So Zerubbabel and Joshua slash Jeshua, they were the two rule, like leaders in Jerusalem at the time. One was like the political governor and one was the like religious leader in Jerusalem. So you're going to see them being referred to throughout the chapters that we study this week. So just when you see them think, okay, yes, they're talking about the leaders of um, Jerusalem at the time. They're almost always mentioned together. It's always like Zerubbabel and Joshua or Zerubbabel and Joshua. So um, that's what they're referring to when you see those two names pop up. Okay, let's talk about a little bit more what we know about these men individually, which of course, isn't too much, but we do have a little bit of context. So first, let's start with Haggai. Haggai wrote a very short book. It's just two chapters. So very short reading from um, Haggai this week. And we don't know much about his context other than we know he was in post-exile Jerusalem. He was a prophet. He did write prophecies. And you'll notice in Haggai's writings, there's this huge theme about the temple and this kind of chastisement for the people that they need to be focused on rebuilding the temple more than rebuilding their homes. That should be their top priority. They need to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. Um, and that's 
that's kind of it for Haggai. <laughs> a short but powerful message. We'll talk a little bit more about his specific chapters in just a little bit. But now let's talk about Zechariah. We know a little bit more about Zechariah. Zechariah was a prophet in post-exile Jerusalem, same exact time, but he also was a priest. And if he's a priest, that means that he is from the tribe of... Levi, right? Only Levites were priests. And so we know there were Levites everywhere scattered throughout all the tribes when they split into the two kingdoms. And so of course that meant Levites were in the group that were taken into exile. In fact, there were other tribes included in that as well because some had escaped from northern, northern Israel when they were conquered. So there was kind of a mixture. We call them all Jews, um, the people that were in that southern kingdom of Judah, but we know that doesn't necessarily mean that all of their heritages are directly from the tribe of Judah. Anyway, so Zechariah was a priest. And so he had some things to teach to the people again about um, how to make the temple a priority, a lot of prophecies. He saw some visions, talks about a lot of um, symbolism for what it means to really trust in the Lord. And then Zechariah also saw a lot of prophecies and visions about the last days and what it would look like when Christ would come and reign among his people and ultimately save the people in Jerusalem. You'll notice throughout both of these books, huge theme of temples. Temple is everywhere. <laughs> so it makes sense from a historical standpoint because that was their job. <laughs> that was their spiritual job, right? Um, was to get that temple rebuilt. They, that's why they were allowed to go back to Jerusalem. And so that was their top priority. Okay, let's now talk a little bit more in depth for each of these chapters so that you feel super confident as you dive into them, that you understand what's going on and it all makes sense. So let's start with Haggai. Once again, Haggai is just two very short chapters. Um, the first chapter is, like I said, Haggai tells the people, focus on building the temple more than building your own home. He's kind of chastising them. And the cool part is, the people listen. They repent and change. And then Haggai gets to tell them, the Lord is pleased. The Lord is pleased because you have repented and you have done better. I love it. I love it. Um, and then the Lord is also stirring up their hearts to want to do temple work. Chapter two, um, the Lord is very pleased for the changes that they're making. And he also says that the Lord is keeping his covenants because the people are keeping their covenants in return. So, it's kind of fun to read prophecies that happen after the destruction of Jerusalem, right? We don't have to read about all the doom and gloom anymore because it's already happened. <laughs> um, a little refreshing to read these post-exile prophecies. Um, not that they're all happy, but it at least is a little bit happier than some of the other doom and gloom we've been reading. Okay, now let's talk about Zechariah. Now, Zechariah has 14 chapters. Um, a lot of them are like fairly normal length, but there are quite a few that are a bit shorter, and we're not even reading all of them, so keep a lookout for that. We are reading chapters 1 through 3 and 7 through 14, so we're skipping chapters 4 through 6 in there. Um, so just heads up as you're reading. I know we're used to reading all the chapters. We've done that for the past few weeks, but we are skipping around in Zechariah just a little bit. Um, so we don't have to read too much in his book. Okay, chapter one in Zechariah. Very similar to Haggai, Zechariah is calling the people to repentance because they haven't made building a temple their top priority. And he tells them, you have to do better than your ancestors. You have to do better than the previous generations. And he says that when there is a temple in Jerusalem, um, that the Lord can dwell there and it will be such a blessing to the people. Chapter two, Christ will return to Jerusalem and he will be able to dwell with the people because there is a temple there. Chapter three, Christ will then come a second time. Christ will have a second coming and he will also return to Jerusalem and dwell in his temple at that time. Okay, now we skip chapters four through six. Just for your information, it's a lot of very heavy symbolism about what it means to really trust in the Lord um, and to put all your belief in the Lord. So you can skip those three chapters or you can read them if you want. It's up to you, but that's what you're missing if you do skip over them and stick with the assigned reading. It's just a lot of the same stuff we've been reading about, just more heavy symbolism with a vision that Zechariah had. Okay, now chapter seven. This is when um, Zechariah is chastising Judah because they haven't been fasting with the Lord in mind. 
They haven't been doing it with real intent. And so he invites them to show mercy, to show love, to have that real intent when they're fasting and also just in general when they're interacting with people to have that real intent in their hearts. Chapter eight, there will be a scattering and gathering of Israel. So that is still to come. Um, Jerusalem will always be a safe place for God's covenant people. And he even counsels the people to be sincere in their actions, whatever they're doing, to, to always be sincere. Chapter 9, this is a cool prophecy that Christ will return riding on a donkey. We're going to get to read about that next year in the New Testament. So keep this in mind. Zechariah is the one who prophesies about Christ riding triumphantly on a donkey. Um, and that he will free prisoners. I just love reading from the Old Testament. It makes the New Testament make much more sense in my mind. Um, okay, chapter 10, um, Zechariah is warning about idols. Idols don't have meaning. Don't pay attention to them. Um, the Lord will gather Israel all together and he will bless them. Chapter 11 has another cool prophecy. This talks about how when Christ comes, he will be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. Interesting prophecy there too. Chapter 12, talking about now in the last days, the Lord will gather, will gather all of his people together um, and the Lord will always save Jerusalem. Chapter 13, Christ will be crucified and he will be crucified by the Jews, the very people that Zechariah is preaching to right now. He's saying, you will be the ones to crucify the Savior, but then you will be repentant and you will become the Lord's people because you can be refined and tried. And that's how we know that we are becoming God's people is when we're refined through our trials. Final chapter, chapter 14 in Zechariah, Christ will reign in the new millennium and all of the righteous people will say holiness unto the Lord. All right, I hope that helps give you some context as you dive into all of the book of Haggai and most of the book of Zechariah this week. I think for my personal focus question, for sure, um, this theme of the temple, I can't ignore that. And that um, comparison that Haggai makes of you guys need to stop focusing on building your homes and instead focus on building the temple. To me, the spiritual parallel there is, am I focusing too much on making my life comfortable? Or am I willing to put that comfort aside and seek after things that will make me spiritually better, that will help me spiritually progress, that will help me draw closer to the Lord? Am I sitting in comfort or am I progressing? And progressing looks like a lot of hard work. <laughs> it looks like a lot of putting your phone away. <laughs> it looks like a lot of turning off the TV, getting up and actually doing something. That's what spiritual progression looks like. So that's what I want to examine for myself today. And I invite you to do the same. How can I make sure I'm not focused so much on my personal comfort and instead I'm focused on the things that matter absolutely the most, which are things of eternal nature? That's my top priority. If you have any thoughts, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are about this question. But I hope that's something you can kind of keep in mind this week. Um, I hope you have a great week studying these almost last two books in the Old Testament. Last week, we've got our final book. Um, and I'll be back with Big Picture Monday to help you through that one. In the meantime, have a fantastic week. Make sure to grab One Minute Scripture Study um, as your daily devotional book for next year in the New Testament with daily entries and takeaway of the day in five words or less so that you can work on applying this every single day next year. Um, your family definitely needs a copy of this. It's available on Amazon, also available in Costco in many different locations, um, and coming soon to Desert Book and Seagull Book as well. But Amazon's the fastest way to find it if you're looking for it. Um, also makes a great gift if I do say so myself. <laughs> All right, have a great week this week, and I'll see you next week. Happy studying.